Podcast City Network. This is Final Score, your number one podcast for sports news. Here are your hosts, Craig. Hey guys, we are live here for another episode of Final Score, episode 59. And uh, I know this isn't our normal day. You know, we're kind of trying to get back to things after going through sports movie madness. Uh, everything was absolutely crazy. But uh, now we are trying to come out the other side, especially uh, through sports movie madness, through the pandemic and all the craziness we've been having to deal with. But we are here. But I also, as you see, I, I don't have a Craig. Craig is MIA because since quarantine is starting to end, Craig had to go back to work. So uh, that guy is drowning in a sea of work as I get to sit here and mm, enjoy a cold beverage with some jerseys behind me on a beautiful Saturday. And I know he's probably watching, cursing me left and right, but it's okay. We got you covered, bud, because I have none other than the man, the myth, the legend, Kevin Wathen of the Rugby Review here to be co-host today. How you doing, bud? Doing all right. It's uh, very hot, so I appreciate sitting in the AC right now, kind of cooling off. I had a pretty strenuous workout this morning for rugby, um, but we'll give it a go. It's, uh, it's a beautiful Saturday. Hope to start grilling soon as soon as we wrap up here. Get yeah. on the barbecue, start grilling, having enjoying some beverages, and hanging out with some friends and family. Absolutely. I can't wait either. I think it's going to be a really awesome weekend. Uh, it's a great to celebrate uh, Memorial Day weekend, especially that we're starting to get back to some type of normalcy. And that's that's one thing I know a lot of people have been just just praying we can get back to is, is, is some kind of normalcy. So hopefully with us getting back to our normal format, we can bring you a little bit of normalcy today. But to make sure that you keep up on all things Final Score, you have to make sure to follow us on social media. All you have to do is go on to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, or Instagram and search at P. CN final score give us a like give us a follow uh let us know how we're doing leave us a rating you know we always try to bring the very best show that we can and the only way we can is if we know where we got to improve and since we do this for you guys you guys gotta be the ones to tell us so drop us a line let us know and uh, we'll do everything we can and we'll definitely get back to you as soon as we can and uh what kind of content platforms can they find us on kevin they can find us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Podcasts. Just remember to search keyword final score, one word. It'll pop up, look for the scoreboard, and you can find us on all those platforms. That's right. Definitely can find us on all those platforms. And you can also find us on Podcast City Network. All you have to do is go check out Podcast City Network on all of their social media outlets on Facebook at backslash Podcast City Network, on Twitter at Podcast City Net, on YouTube by searching keyword Podcast City Network, and of course on their website at podcastcity.net. And they have so many great shows. I uh, just recently announced that they have three new shows that they have brought on from Celerity Gaming. So a lot of great stuff happening and even more in the works. So definitely make sure to keep an eye out and another great thing they've been doing is now you can join podcast city network all you got to do is go to podcastcity.net backslash join now to be able to do so because they offer an array of membership services including logo design branding social media advertising live podcast hosting uh, and much much more uh, you also gain access to a, a great network of shows to help with cross promotion guests and overall reach while becoming a part of an ever-expanding pcn community that is solely based on people helping people which is really important and the best part is no membership fee. So what are you waiting for? Go to podcastcity.net backslash join now and join the fastest growing independent podcast network around Podcast City Network. Man. Again, also on Podchaser, your daily source for podcast uh, discovery, Apple Podcasts is no longer the only credible place to rate and review podcasts. Follow creators, browse every podcast ever, and rate and review episodes. That is found on podchaser.com and key, uh, search keyword final score. Remember one word, follow, rate, and review us on podchaser.com. 
Definitely. And Podchase has been a really big one. It was really great talking to those guys at PodFest this year down in Orlando, Florida. Uh, it was absolutely amazing in every way and a, a real great wealth of, of information and knowledge that they have. And they're doing great things over there. Uh, just kind of like the guys over at Bullhorn, which now you can get Bullhorn. <clears throat> excuse me, on your uh, Android or Apple devices. All you have to do is just go on to either uh, search keyword final score and give us a follow and a listen because Bullhorn puts a new spin on listening to podcasts. Bullhorn's mission is to extend the reach of podcasts to everyone's ear, regardless of location or income. No data or expensive smartphone is needed. All you can do, all you have to do is stream from your device or call into your podcast of choice without using up your data. It's really that easy, completely free. Find final score on Bullhorn and give us a like and a follow. But we've been getting really pushed lately by by these really great guys. I think they're over at Radius Digital Media or uh, Marketing. Sorry. What more can you tell us about that, Kevin? Yeah, I want to give a quick shout out to my boys, Alec and Sean. Met with them a few weeks. They're there at Radius Digital Marketing. They've been extremely helpful in building our brand and expanding our audience. They specialize in different things like ad management, lead generation, brand awareness, social media marketing, which they've helped us out tremendously in that oh, yeah. area. If you're looking to take your business to the next level, get a hold of these guys, Alec and Sean. Contact Alec at Alec, A L E K, and uh, Anzus, A N U Z I S, at radiusdm.com for more information on those two. Yeah, definitely. And those, those guys are awesome in every way, shape, and form. So definitely, if you need someone to be able to help you with those kinds of things, definitely reach out to Radius Digital Marketing, uh, and they will definitely be able to take care of you. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing uh, since we partnered with them to see the kind of growth that we've had. And uh, it's been it's been really crazy. Hey, sweetie, how are you? I had my little VPK graduate today. That's right. Congrats. Had a great day. We'll say hi to everybody. Say hi. Yeah, all the people out there. All right, guys. But yeah, we got a lot of, uh, on tap for today. And uh, we got to start off with uh, the proudness of, of final score right now, the rugby review. Here on episode 59, I got a lot of things coming for you guys in the world of rugby. You know, we are, what is it, Saturday today, about six days away from the start of the NRL, which is going to take place on Thursday. Um, make sure you get your sleep. It starts at 5.50 in the morning for us here on, here on the East Coast to watch that game live. Um, but we have live sports, so I'm going to be first up in the morning with my cup of coffee watching the Brisbane Broncos take on the Parramatta Eels. Um, that is the only match there on Thursday. On Friday, we're going to have the North Queensland Cowboys. They're going to take on the Gold Coast Titans, and that will kick off at 4 a.m. Uh, the other Friday match is going to be the Sydney Roosters versus the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Up the Rabbitohs in that match, my wife and I picked the Rabbitohs not only to win that game, but also as loyal fans from here on out. Hmm. Um, Saturday, we got a bunch of matches that are kicking off. We have the New Zealand Warriors that are going to be taking on the St. George Dragons, the Cronella Sharks, which are going to be taking on the West Tigers, the Melbourne Storm, which I know is Chris's team here, they're going to be taking on the Canberra Raiders. That's right. Go we Storm. The Corinth Panthers taking on the Newcastle Knights. And then the last match for this draw will be the Manly Sea Eagles taking on the Canterbury Bulldogs. So we have a lot of great matches kicking off Thursday going in through the weekend um, and the, those last matches wrapping up there on Saturday. So that is everything rugby league that is going on right now. Switching over to rugby union, our different code, our 15 on 15. There's a lot of rule changes and a lot of uncertainty in rugby union right now. You have the FRU, um, which is the Florida rugby union, trying to decipher all this information and get back to the clubs on when a restart could happen. What is a restart going to look like? Um, is the game going to even look the same? Because based on the news that World Rugby put out this morning, I was reading, is very drastic rule changes. Um, mm. This was put out about eight hours ago, and they're considering dropping scrums in the game, mm. um, dropping malls, um, lineouts are going to become uncontested, and a lot of rugby players, both on the professional level all the way down to the adult leagues, they're not – uh, too kind with these rule changes. They are not taking a liking to them. They do not want to see the game being tampered with. 
the game has pretty much in its entirety stayed true to itself over so many years from its first inception there in England, even though there's the two splitting codes. Mm -hmm. And you have a sport that hasn't seen very drastic rule changes like these take place. Little minor things here and there, um, but these are major changes, and it kind of takes away from the sport. Um, it takes away from the intensity of it. It takes away from the uh, collision and contact that we're all used to. Mm -hmm. And I don't think if they put this sport out there that you're going to have as many viewers or you're going to have as many participants or you're going to have as many ruggers willing to participate in these new rule changes in this new game. Right. Um, so for me being a player, being a former coach, um, I would rather the restart be delayed a little bit more and allow all these rule changes to not take effect into the game and keep the name, keep the game as true to its beginnings as we, um, as we can. Um, I also sat down with two individuals this week. I was very pleased. I had some openings in my schedule. Obviously, with things opening back up, it's kind of difficult to do all the things you'd like to do. Mm -hmm. But Aaron Church, who is the head coach for the 2019 state champion Jacksonville Wolverines U19 program, was able to sit down with me and have a chat. So it was great being able to sit down. You can catch his interview on PCN Final Score on Facebook. It is live right now. Go check it out. Um, it talks about high school football in the state of Florida and how high school football coaches can utilize the sport of rugby to make football better, not only at their programs, but across the board. Mm -hmm. So it was a great interview, great sit down with him. If you're a coach in any capacity, I would suggest you listen to it. If you're a athlete who's playing football in the area, um, you're in high school, go ahead and listen to it. If you're in the Jacksonville area and want to try out a new sport, he is the man to get in contact with, with the Jacksonville Wolverines U19 program. He is everything youth rugby, and he's looking to, whenever this thing restarts, to win another state title. He's not looking to stop at one. He's looking to build this thing into something similar to what we see in Bradenton, Florida, which is the IMG Academy. He's trying to build his own rugby academy in Jacksonville, and there's a lot of supporters that are supporting him on this endeavor and a lot of businesses that have stepped up to the plate not only since airing this interview, I've heard a lot of contact, a lot of people ringing me up, um, but a lot of interest around himself as well. So hopefully we can get this thing going. And the second individual I got to interview, his name being Sterling Wynn. He was a former, I played against him. I've been a teammate of his. I've also coached him on my first ever youth rugby program I started up. And now he is playing with a Division I side in Pittsburgh. Um, he's been able to travel the world, and we delve into all the places he's traveled to from when I first introduced him to high school rugby to where he's at now. And he put it out there, and he's seen interest in several semi-professional clubs in Italy, in Canada, in Australia that wish him to come out and sign a contract with them to play for their clubs. So it was interesting, and I'm hopefully we'll bring him on in later episodes when he does sign a professional contract and um, travels internationally, but we're still waiting until this um, COVID thing passes mm -hmm. for him to get that deal going. Definitely, definitely. So definitely make sure to check out this interview. We're going to give you a brief little preview before it goes live on Facebook and YouTube. So enjoy. <laughs> to welcome on the show today here on final score the rugby review with kevin Wathen. Um i brought on a friend a former teammate a colleague of mine um, sterling win just to give you guys some background this dude came to me and i used to be his teacher at pine ridge high school um, when i started up my first ever youth rugby program almost straight out of college to get this thing growing he was one of my first athletes and rose to great heights. 
Uh, got to play internationally, got to play overseas a bunch. Um, he is currently in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and he is playing for a semi-professional side up there in Pittsburgh, and he keeps on working his way up through the ranks. I like to welcome on the show, Sterling. How's it going? Pretty good, man. How you been? Not too bad. I'm enjoying things as they are open up here down in Florida, as you guys are still holed up in the stay-at-home orders, I'm hearing. Yeah, I wish I wish you wasn't being held hostage at home still, but, you know, <laughs> Governor Wolf has his way. How you been dealing with it? Oh, um, I've been dealing with it all right. Um, I've been just doing little workouts here at my house, um, going for walks and stuff with my daughter, and that's pretty much been it. Nothing else we can really do. I need you to chill with the workouts. I had to play you later on in the year. You need to chill with those. Hey, listen, I'm trying to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> have those treats. Have the extra scoop of ice cream in the freezer. It's okay hey, don't to worry. on a few pounds. Don't worry. That's that's still that's still in there. I just have to run a couple of extra laps when it comes time. There you go. <laughs> so... I know you're a union player, both league player in the summers, and you kind of go back and forth between the two. Who's your union team right now that you're playing with? So, yeah, right now um, I'm in Pittsburgh, so I'm playing with the Pittsburgh Harlequins. Um, just sucks that, you know, the season was right a week before the season was getting ready to start. Um, that's when we got the email and the messages came out that everything was going to be postponed until stuff started to open back up again. So. As of right now, I'm still here, and once the season picks back up in the fall, I'll be playing with the Harlequins. And the Harlequins, pretty top level team, aren't they? Here in yeah, the states. Yeah, it's um Division One. Um, I'm trying to think, is it Pacific Coast? I think it's the Pacific East Coast, something like that. Um, and they is pretty much a bunch of high level players. We had a couple players um on our team that were um professional players from the MLR who had came back down just because of um, injury issues and stuff like that. And they want to get back up to their level of play to get back out there for their teams. So they came down to uh, Pittsburgh and hopped on the Harlequins. And sure enough, they one of them ended up going back to um, play with the Washington Irish um, new team or is it Washington Irish or D.C.? I can't think of the team in D.C. But one of them ended up getting um, picked up for that team. And um, that's where he's at now. So definitely a lot of competition and stuff up this way. Um, so he's playing with the Har Harlequins currently. That is a uh, rugby union. Obviously, you make the switch to rugby league in the summer times. Who do you play for in the summer times? So um, last year, I played with the Brooklyn Kings, as you can tell, you know, as you win. I like the ring, showing it off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing too crazy, but yeah, so – um, that's, that would be my team as of right now. I'm still considering myself as a Brooklyn King. Um, and probably going forward, that's what I, I might end up playing there, but who knows? So for those that are listening that are not familiar with rugby, what's the difference between the two codes? So, um, rugby league is more like football style. There's downs, um, the possession is transferred back and forth evenly where there is a difference is union is make it, take it. You can keep the ball the whole time. Like it's all about possession, maintaining the ball. And there's also an extra two players on the team. So um, the field is kind of a little bit small, smaller, as you would say, it's a little bit more dirty work done. Um, which do you prefer playing? <sighs> I know I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> question. That's always a tough one. Um, I I started out playing Union, so I'm always going to love Union more. But the passion I have for league has grown crazily just because of all the opportunities it's brought me, all the traveling that I've been able to do with um, league. And I feel like it's changed and benefited my life for the most, um, more than Union has. So if I had to choose one, I would choose league for sure, just because like I, that's kind of my game now, what my mindset is at. Uh, I feel like I'm a league player, but I love – Union a little bit more just because what that's what I started at, you know. And uh, smart answer for that would have been rugby. <laughs> rugby has done a lot for you. It has, um, and you're talking about those.
having to do all kinds of things. Oh, looks like I lost you for a second. Looks like you froze there, bud. Am I good? Yeah, you there? There he is. Looks like you froze for a bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. It's too hot down here for all that. We can't be freezing now. But still, really great interview. Uh, really love hearing what Sterling had to say and also what Aaron had to say. So you can check out both of those interviews are now available on our YouTube page. Just search at PCN Final Score. Uh, give a subscription. Now, obviously, you know, we've been sitting here for, in a lot of cases, almost two months without sports, but a lot of people don't realize there have been little sports that have been able to slowly come back over the past few weeks. Now, with some of those, it's been a little bit tougher than to come back uh we are looking right now with nascar who has al already run two races uh this past week uh this past sunday and wednesday to be exact at darlington motor speedway uh trying to get it in kevin harvick winning the oh, excuse me the uh, monster energy cup race and just trying to get anything in and get back to sports they also do play in the hold the coke zero 600 uh tomorrow and uh will be returning uh, to action yet again. Now they want to try and get back onto a normal schedule. Uh, so the plan right now is that they're basically going to try and hold a race every week uh, up until uh, you know they're able to get back to their sense of normalcy. So a lot of emotions are running high as well um, with NASCAR because there, there's just been so much going on. and Dana White and everything that they've been doing with uh, 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 with their events. I know they went down and it was really tough because Dana White literally was scouring every way to try and be the very first sport back. And it was really crazy. And I know Dana White was, was just <laughs> beside himself trying to get an event back. I know you had to see some of that, uh, Kevin. Yeah, I saw some of it. They're really good fights. Um, it just doesn't have the same energy without the fans in the stands, um, in the crowd cheering on, and you get to hear that. It reminded me a lot of those UFC um, shows, the reality show that they had put out when they were first getting going, and they had the two different teams, and no one's fighting. They're pretty much fighting in what mm -hmm. you see in a gym, in the octagon there. Um, but very good fighting in there. We got a very a lot of good fights coming up in the UFC as well mm -hmm. um, that they're starting to showcase. I know there's um, talks about Conor McGregor getting back in the ring. Who's he going to fight? Um, is Khabib going to get back in the ring? Mm -hmm. um, are we going to see that rematch, or are we going to see something different? So I'm kind of excited about what he's done. Um, I'm definitely excited about how Dana White is pushing to get things restarted back to normalcy because yes. we're doing the same thing on the rugby side of it. We're trying to get back to um, normalcy. We're trying to get back to our sport. Yeah, and that's the big thing. And and UFC, uh, they're they're trying to have a, their next big event on June sixth. So we'll see how a lot of that plays out. Uh, and it's gonna be really interesting because uh, he, like we said, he's been fighting tooth and nail. It seems like, but a lot of people took nods from a lot of different uh, local and international uh, sporting leagues to be able to try and figure out how to do this. We've already seen German, Costa Rican, and Danish international soccer uh, return to full schedules, but with no fans. Uh, and it's been really interesting to see because. Like you said, especially like with the USC, international soccer, whether it's American football, it doesn't matter. Having those fans there is so integral for the energy of a game. So it's, it's very strange to watch any international soccer with no fans. But the first ones to do it were none other than the PBR circuit, professional bull riding. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize this. They were officially the last sport to shut down and the very first sport to come back. And they've been running events uh, dating all the way back to the end of April. April 25th, I believe, was their first event back. 
Now, with that, you know there was a buttload of questions coming from every single sports league uh, around the world. They end up getting hit up uh, by UFC, NASCAR, the NBA, international soccer leagues, all kinds of crazy stuff to try and figure out what they did to be able to get the approval to hold these events. Because, like you know as well as I do, Kevin, a lot of these events, you have to have a permit from local or state government to run. And if you don't get those, you ain't having an event. Yes and no. I mean, it's professional bull riding. We're not talking about uh, the mad cow disease. We're talking about <laughs> coronavirus. If we're talking about mad cow disease, you probably wouldn't see these cowboys strapping up and sitting on top of these bulls. <laughs> but no, it's it's awesome. Um, bull riding is actually big here in the my little town that I live in here in North Florida, South Georgia area, and um, I love it. It's high octane. It's get your adrenaline going just sitting there watching it i'm sitting there sweating um hoping that these guys don't fall out <laughs> <laughs> right you ain't joking about that but when a lot of these sports leagues came calling they were asking like how are you opening back up which i feel is like well we're doing it so it's some happening somehow but the thing is, is is what policies and procedures what kind of testing what kind of staffing and literally what did you give local and state governments to give you that approval and everybody came knocking with one exception, and that was the industry known as pro wrestling. Now, what was interesting, a lot of people don't see pro wrestling as an actual sport. It's sports entertainment, sure. However, it's still a performance, uh, physically a physically based performance medium. Uh, so with that, it has to go under a certain amount of guidelines and things, too. So uh, one thing wrestling got lucky with is that uh, it was declared essential. I know, who would ever would have thought professional wrestling is essential? But only in Florida. Only, only in, in Florida. Florida. Yeah, only in Florida. <laughs> Just because Vince McMahon ended up being added to Trump's advisory committee on the on the uh, pandemic. So with that, WWE was able to be granted special immunity and able to be declared essential and moved all of their shows to the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida with no audience. They hope to move back, though, to a 25 percent capacity for their events starting in July, since the state of Florida is one of the first states to start opening up. However, that is all right now. Subjecture. It's all a rumor. So we don't know, but right now, all wrestling shows, it doesn't matter if it's AEW in Jacksonville, it doesn't matter if it's Impact Wrestling in Canada, everything has been running with no audience and is literally the most eerie thing because of all things that rely on an audience, professional wrestling is the biggest just because you literally have to feed off a crowd and it's kind of hard to do with none of them there. So, you know, it's funny because I reached out to some guys I used to wrestle with too and I, I told them, you know, you look back at when we first started wrestling, you know, we're in front of crowds of, I don't know, 10, 20 people. And now you look at these and it's like, you know what, this is, this reminds me of something. It's like a bunch of rich guys <laughs> doing backyard wrestling, you know? So it's, it gets crazy, you know, but it's pretty, it's pretty funny when you think about it like that. But either way though, you know, those are a lot of things that are still going, but we do have more sports returning soon. Um, I've been hearing a lot of things about golf. Kevin, what can you tell me about golf? Um, May 24th, we got the match champion for charity in uh, Hope Sound, Florida, down there in South Florida. Mm -hmm. um, we'll feature Tiger Woods and Peyton Manning pairing against Phil Mickelson and Tom Brady. If you wow. haven't listened to the audio clip with Peyton Manning knocking on Mickelson <laughs> and Brady, you need to go back and look at it. Oh, it was He's good. talking about how many uh, championships the two of them have won. He's talking about obviously Brady's won a lot. And then he turns to himself. He's like, well, me and Woods uh, combined, we have one or two more than you. So it's a good <laughs> thing they paired us two together because we're you guys are obviously the underdogs. And I just like that banter that goes uh, back and forth between two champions. Absolutely. In their own right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was super entertaining. <laughs> yeah. I always love to hear Peyton Manning just ripping on Brady. And Brady just sits back and enjoys it. He just sits back and laughs. It's all in good fun. Well, it's okay because Brady gets his uh, his quips in here and there as Tom Brady replied to Eli Manning. I just got the message now. Eli Manning has finally joined Twitter, and Tom Brady's reply was, well, you never showed up until the fourth quarter anyway. So <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go wrong with it, man. It's been crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, with everything going on, it's been really great to see them be able to stage this. You know, two amazing quarterbacks from the NFL, two amazing uh, golf players from the PGA, and uh, it's going to keep rolling. Now, this uh, – you said it was May 24th, so that's that's tomorrow. So if you get a chance, try and check that out. I'm sure they're going to have a huge feature on it. But PGA doesn't plan on doing anything, though, until almost mid-June with the Charles Schwab Challenge in Fort Worth, Texas. So we'll see how it works out, man. 
Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that match tomorrow, though. I'm looking forward to hear all the trash talking that comes oh. out of Peyton's mouth towards Brady. Like, this is going to be great. <laughs> oh, He's going to be so talking good. the entire time in his backswing. He's going to be uh, <laughs> harassing him. It's going to be like a version of uh, watching Happy Gilmore out there. Yeah. And that's what I think I can see in Peyton Manning. He's just going to be harassing Brady the entire <laughs> Had enough? Time. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's too good. But we do have other sports that are going to be returning as well, uh, including boxing. Now, it's not going to be anything too awfully big yet. Uh, but June nineteenth in Philadelphia, Impact Network will be holding. I think I believe it's an eight to ten match card, and then June twenty seventh in Newcastle, UK, Dazzin will come in uh, with their card as well, which will have a title fight on it. But they don't really expect any kind of big name boxers really to step out until about July, which is the big rumor, especially with Tyson Fury. Uh, so we could see some things happen, but boxing is really trying to take it seems like a, a slow roll approach with this. Do you agree? Uh, I don't agree because I'm seeing other sports that are taking off ahead of boxing and they're in that close encounters, close contact. And if you have no fans that are showing up to match, because I think boxing is one of those sports you have one-on-one, -on -one, you get the antibody test or you get your coronavirus test, make sure you don't have a fever for those two fighters, throw them in the ring and give people what they want to see. And that's live sports. I think the NRL is doing it right. And, uh, starting up their matches May 28th. They're kind of at the forefront of this, and I think boxing should do the same. I don't uh, – June 19th seems late to me with all these other sports opening back up. Right. And that's what it seems like, just that slow roll approach. And a lot of – it seems some of these, these, these entities are taking that because obviously no one wants to rush back in, uh, end up playing for like a month, and then have to shut down again. And I know that's a big fear uh, for some of these leagues, but – not for international soccer when it comes to the English Premier League or the Indian Premier League. Uh, the English Premier League has already uh, slated for a June return as part of their project restart. So they're trying to waste no time and have already returned to socially distanced training as of this week. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see them kind of front run. Now, obviously, they're still coming on the heels of uh, Germany, Costa Rica uh, and, and the Danish. So. We'll kind of see how it works out, uh, but still, all the other international leagues, especially for uh, the Euro Soccer Leagues, are all watching uh, the EPL, they're watching uh, Bundesliga, all these different soccer entities that uh, are real already returning to play. So we'll definitely see how a lot of that comes up, but as we see here, there's this nice little one, this nice little note on here for returning soon, it's titled Rugby. We are still waiting on word here in the United States. It's a waiting game. It's what's going to open back up. And I saw some news come out with Governor DeSantis here in Florida um, this week says all youth sports activities can resume effective immediately. So we then have to go through all the channels as far as reaching out to the rugby unions and saying, we got a green light from the governor. Do we have a green light from you so we can start holding practices and obviously make them safe practices, but get these kids back to um, some type of sport on the men's side. Again, it's still a waiting game with the unions. So here in the States, we're kind of just training on our own, getting fit as we can, mm -hmm. because we know when it kicks back up, when it kicks back off in all these sports, they're not giving the athletes much time to get their bodies right before these uh, matches take place. So we know as athletes, it's best to do the work now. Mm -hmm. That way, when that quick restart takes place, we're already in game shape, um, which is a problem I can foresee happening in a lot of sports is they're going to try to – owners are going to try to um, get revenue in as, much, as quickly oh, yeah. as possible. And they don't, know, they don't always have the player's best interest in mind when they're seeing millions and millions of dollars being lost right now due to the fact that there's empty stadiums around the world. So they want to get this thing back started. They want revenue coming in their pockets, and they want it as quickly as possible. The players, however, um, have kind of taken the short end of that stick because you have to play, otherwise you're going to be replaced, and mm -hmm. you have to get your body in top shape in little to no time. So that's where we're at with rugby. We'll see it kick off in the NRL this upcoming Thursday, so make sure you tune in early to watch it or watch the replay there on Fox League. That's right. Go Melbourne Storm. So at the end of the day, though, 
it, it's going to be interesting. You know, this is something that's very unprecedented. This isn't something we've really have ever dealt with in our generation. So this is going to be a lot of trial and error. I have a feeling, you know, we might see some leagues end up shutting back down because of this. Uh, obviously we've already seen leagues fold up shop, which is one thing we obviously don't want to see at all, but we've already seen it happen with the XFL uh, and, and some smaller uh, soccer clubs. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But when it comes to a lot of the domestic product, uh, that's where a lot of things kind of get murky. A lot of people don't know what's going to happen uh, because there's no plan in place yet. With Major League Baseball, they're still trying to hash out an agreement for a return to play uh, with the Players Association. And, and it's been really at a standstill. They've been having really tense talks, uh, and it's been really difficult. Uh, and their commissioner, uh, Manfred, has been trying to stay in contact with federal officials and has Trump on speed dial. Uh, so he's trying to do everything he can to bring Major League Baseball back because when this hit, you know, they were only two weeks out from their opening day. So mm -hmm. to have something like this happen that close is really a kill shot, really. So hopefully uh, they'll be able to figure something out and maybe return to play. Uh, the speculation was hopefully by, by August at the extreme latest, but literally they're in a hands up kind of, of position right now. Not like National Hockey League, on the other hand. The National Hockey League has been making amazing strides and already proposed and got the Players Association to, to agree to a 24-team playoff format to finish the 2019-2020 season. That would also include a round-robin tournament within it. Uh, so it's, it's absolutely crazy, and it took them from Thursday afternoon to last night to get this agreement in place. Uh, so do you think this is really going to be good for hockey to make a quicker return? Um, just leave the Red Wings out of that 2014 playoff. We do not. <laughs> I love my wings, but they they just need the season to rebuild under Stevie and get back to normalcy like everyone else and hopefully get back to those winning ways of the past. I think it's a great idea for the NHL, though. For the fans, this is something they've never seen before. Nope. I think it's going to be great. It's like March Madness college basketball for hockey. You might have a Cinderella team like the Las Vegas Knights from a couple years ago make a run at it when everyone predicted them to finish dead last in the standings. Come on, Flyers. <laughs> no. I think it's the only so, shot we have at a Stanley Cup right now. <laughs> like 2014 playoff, we have a chance. We have a chance. It's Are legitimate. Are you saying we have a chance? <laughs> but you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> I tell you, it's going to be great, though. I would love to see hockey come back because it is one of the more physical sports outside of rugby. So uh, it'd be it'd be awesome just to see the, see how that works out. But the NBA has been a whole nother story onto itself as well. They're using a complete wait and see what others do approach uh, and has left the teams kind of floundering in a way to the point where a lot of them are looking uh, for guidance uh, amid all the financial concerns they're dealing with because you got to think they're supposed to be paying for uh, arena time, their locker rooms, their own facilities, uh, player salaries, personnel salaries, all these different things that are just not being covered. And they're already a good way through their season, well over 75% through their season. So it, it's interesting to see what they're going to do because – not a lot of people really realize with the NBA, they could end up being the most affected sport. And even though they were the first American sport to shut down, they are in a position where they might, they might not even have a real playoff. They're supposed to be playing their playoffs and going into the finals within the next few weeks. Yet, you know, we haven't had any sports. So their return plan is more just trying to finish the season, but it could offset how they start their next season and could affect all of their seasons to come. So uh, they're stuck in a very interesting position. Uh, do you think the NBA is really going to try and, and get things going, or do you think they're going to continue just to sit back and wait what others to see what others do? The NBA has a very strong players association, very, very strong union that looks out for the players, and I commend the players association for the NBA and what they're doing because we've seen it across the board. Uh, two weeks ago, you had the Tampa Bay Rays pitcher that spoke up and said, I don't want it. My health is not worth going out there and playing baseball. Granted, that's Absolutely. how I support my family. That's how I pay the bills. But my health is not worth going out on the mound and playing a sport that you're basically forcing me back into because it's mm -hmm. my job in order for entertainment for others. And I think the NBA is doing a smart, uh, smart approach as far as listening to the medical advice that's coming out and kind of waiting and seeing what's going to work and what's not going to work and being able to steer through those avenues and whenever they do 
release a product on the courts for us to watch. It's going to be a great product, uh, just like we paused off with. I feel bad for individuals, even though I don't like them very much, like LeBron, because I really thought he had a shot at winning his first title in L.A. with the way the Lakers were um, heading into this crisis that shut everything down. They were rolling. They were um, playing well together. Uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron were gelling very well. It was exciting basketball to see. Um, so hopefully when they do restart, they give us a good product. They don't have to worry about shutting down again and restarting because that could hurt your brand in the long run. Mm -hmm. So I like their approach to this wait and see. And the WNBA seems to be piggybacking on that approach from the NBA as far as following their lead. Yeah, absolutely. WNBA has just been kind of taking a wait and see approach. They're hoping for an early July tip off, uh, but nothing's in place yet. And I think it's because, like you said, I think they're adopting that wait and see approach that the NBA has undertaken. So uh, we'll definitely see, I think, sports at some point in ba- in a basketball form. It's just when that will happen, because one thing the NBA has said is they are committed to making sure the season is finished. So the only way you can do that is by having that championship game. So we'll see. We'll see how it works out. But as of right now, we still have two sports that are unaffected. Two I know that we hold near and dear to our hearts, and that is the National Football League and college football, uh, both of which, as of right now, are not affected. The NFL still held their virtual draft uh, this this past April, uh, which if you'd like to see a recap of that, you can go check the 2020 draft special that Final Score did on our YouTube page or on Facebook. Just go ahead and, and check it out and give it a like. And... Uh, they were still able to hold that event, even with all the craziness they originally had planned of having uh, players coming up in boats and then walking down red carpet, all this kind of craziness, turned into a complete virtual event, So, uh, which actually did not go that well. I think the, the biggest problem they had was finding fans to, you know, line up behind Roger Goodell on the screen. But, you know, it, it, it's whatever. So they're still moving forward. Like it's business as usual. They still release their schedule for this upcoming season. Uh, they still plan uh, to hold that September 10th start date uh, for the very first game and are considering things like no fans or limited fan access. But they they are taking that approach as there is there's going to be an NFL season. There's no way they're going to not have an NFL season. So they also have stated, though, that with how the schedule was set up, there's a lot of contingencies in place, a lot of backup plans. Uh Apparently, a lot of teams share the same bye week as their week two opponent, which is, I heard, part of a formula they use to be able to come up uh, with a backup plan if they do have to halt play in any kind of way. So I think it's going to be really interesting, but I still think we're going to get NFL on schedule. Uh, Do you agree? I agree. I think football is going to come back. I think all these leagues are going to come forward and start opening back up, and the NFL is going to be watching them very closely like the NBA is watching um, with Adam Silver there with the NBA. And I think they're just going to sit back and wait. Goodell's going to do um, what he can to get everyone back in order. Um, it's going to be very odd um, for most teams around the league with this no fan appro- uh, approach or 25% capacity, mm-hmm. I heard, in some stadiums. Um, even they were going at lengths to looking at different devices that could be installed at the gates going into the stadiums to kind of check people to make sure they're not sick before they enter the stadium. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at long lines before, is it worth it going to the stadiums now as a fan? Um, But I hope it does kick back off. The thought that's been running through my head for the past several months is, what if this coronavirus hits us in like October? Mm. Like right in the middle of football season, everything shuts down. Um, That could be, that could have been huge. I mean, you're talking about the NFL who holds a very large viewing audience around the world. Everyone tunes into it. Very large revenue, um, not only for themselves, but also for a lot of restaurants, bars, everything else. Mm -hmm. A lot Um, of business partners, everything. Yeah, completely different scenario if it happens in the fall. So hopefully they do kick off soon. Um, Hopefully down here in Jacksonville, we're hoping Minshew can come through as our starter. (laughs) <laughs> um, we put him at QB1 and kind of said, here's your team. We didn't give him much, uh, not many weapons around him, but hopefully he does his thing and we see uh, another six-round wonder come out of the NFL. Yeah, definitely. And, and any of you fans listening, if you have any opinions whatsoever, please make sure to drop it in the chat. Uh, we definitely want to know what you guys think on this. It's been absolutely crazy. And there is one more sport that we do have to talk about real quick. 
and its uh, its return strategy, and that's none other than college football because college football is kind of taking an NFL approach. They're trying to stay business as usual, but they're in a much more uh, uneven playing field just because a lot of the schools control when they return to play, how things will go down. This is not something that's going to be determined by the NCAA. This is all going to be determined by university presidents, athletic directors, local, state, and federal officials. You know, Those are the people that are going to be making decisions when it comes to college football. However, I think we are moving in the right direction because we had a bit, a bit of news come through recently, uh, didn't we? Yeah, the NCAA votes to resume voluntary in-person athletic activities, um, and that's going to begin June 8th here in the next couple of weeks and then um like you had said our first games are looking to be rescheduled august um 29th um and everything looks to be looks right now hopefully fingers crossed it looks like ucf is going to make another run at the national title we're this close <laughs> i think i think they got a shot i'm not gonna lie we'll see have, what you, seen, have you seen dg dylan gabriel he, Dude. this kid's a beast he is he was He's a great not recruit. Quite Milton yet. Yeah. And I say yet, but this kid could be the next KZ for us down in UCF. Definitely could know. be. You saw the article I sent over to you from ESPN, you did. right? You did. That UCF is what? Yeah. The, one of the best teams over Florida or yep. the best chance to reach the playoffs. Has the best the championship uh, odds of any team in Florida, even over the Gators. So. Ooh, that hurts. Ooh. I feel for you guys out there, but you know, just always remember there's another team always lurking out there. You always got to watch out for it. So just saying, just saying, yeah, I know getting it this high kind of, you know, puts a lot of pressure right there. So, you know, see what happens though. <laughs> but it, it, I, I think it's, we're still going to have college football on schedule. I think obviously a lot of leagues are going to go in expecting that there's going to be no or limited attendance by fans, that there's going to be increased health screening guidelines uh, as well as quarantine measures before and after games and all this kind of stuff. But these I, I always hate to say that because I, I feel like I see it on the news every you know 10 seconds is this is sadly becoming our new norm. This is what we are going to have to go through just to be able to enjoy little things like this, at least for the time being. Hopefully come next year when a vaccine drops and we start moving ahead and, and kind of bring down all these cases that are going on, things will return back to a normalcy that, that we're accustomed to. However, who really knows? But at the end of the day, at, through all of this and all these different leagues and all the different sports that are trying to come back, do you think sports are returning too soon? No, not at all. I think looking at the numbers that are coming out right now, and I know this virus, it's novel. We can't really tell if it's going to affect young people versus old. I know they're keeping the elderly protected, which we should, all 65 Definitely. plus, making sure they are taking um, care of first. And then we're looking out for those who have, previous medical emergencies, any type of uh, previous medical condition. But I think if you are a healthy individual and you consent to go back to play the sport, mm -hmm. um, no one's forcing you, no one's telling you you should or shouldn't. Um, if you consent to it and say, yes, I want to continue and get back to it, um, you should be allowed to do so. Um, and I think as long as it's done in a safe manner and precautions are taken, and they're making sure they're doing their proper screening of the athletes to make sure they're not sick. Um, they should be allowed to compete, even if it is without fans. Uh, I know myself being a huge UCF fan, um, I want to get back in that bounce house and be jumping up and down with the team, celebrating my team. And that's the biggest uncertainty that I don't feel comfortable with is my wife and I met outside a stadium um, tailgating we have been to hundreds of games um, we're very familiar with stadium food and finding <laughs> our way around um, all the stadiums we're pretty comfortable with um, standing in the long lines and getting there and tailgating before games and enjoying celebrating your team and I think that's the biggest um, uncertainty that fans do not like they want to sit and cheer on their teams real life. It's not the same when you're watching it from, from a screen. Very true. Very true in every way, just because that it makes such an impact <clears throat> to be able to enjoy games in person. And you remember me and you went to so many different UCF games together, or even just sporting events together and how much of an impact something like that will have. And 
not having fans there or having to do it from home. Like you said, it's a completely different experience. So yeah, it, it's going to be rough, you know, I, and I think pretty much through fall and spring, I think we're going to see a lot of leagues where it's just going to be that weird kind of almost taboo feeling, you know, way to enjoy sports until we're able to get back to any kind of normalcy. So, I mean, I, I hope, I hope we get through it quickly, but again, we'll, we'll see how it works out, but something that doesn't seem to be working out very well uh, is this entire saga with Dak Prescott. Uh, the Dak Prescott saga has been absolutely insane. This this guy is wanting all kinds of money. A lot of people don't feel he deserves it. Some people feel he does deserve it. So, But regardless, he's trying to become the highest paid quarterback in NFL history. But now things have changed, it seems like, a little bit. And, and that's what kind of blows my mind with this situation is that he reportedly turned down a huge contract. Kevin, how big was that contract? It's absurd that he even turned this down. Five years, $175 million over five years. Reportedly, this uh, he wants more than $45 million per year. Uh, like, doesn't make sense at all. It doesn't make sense what his agent's trying to do. I don't understand why he's turning down this money. You play for one of the most storied franchises in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You're you're pretty solidified in your spot. There's no one challenging your spot there in Dallas. Andy well. Dalton is not challenging your spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> like everyone says, Andy Dalton was a good quarterback, but a few years ago, he's not the same That's guy true. that he was when he came into the league. And Dak Prescott, he does not deserve even the five years, $175 million, in my opinion. Agreed. Because all he has to do is hand off to Zeke. Zeke takes that 50%, 60%, 70% workload off of Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is only put in situations in like a second and eight, second and seven, mm -hmm. make that plant throw. He has tons of wide receivers, tons of weapons around him. And then if worse comes to worse, you hand off to Zeke, mm -hmm. one of the best running backs in the league. Uh, I don't know. If he was there doing it himself and Zeke wasn't there, I can see these numbers adding up, but they don't add up. And the fact that he turned it down on top of that, now I'm sitting here scratching my head and wondering where, what his stance is on this, where he's trying to go with this. Yeah, I have to absolutely agree because when you're talking about trying to make <clears throat> more money than the highest current paid quarterback, which is Russell Wilson making $35 million a year, Dak Prescott takes that five-year 175. He's making as much as Russell Wilson, so why not take that money? What are you doing? Because the thing is, I see with Dak Prescott, <clears throat> yes, his stats were pretty decent last year. He threw for like 4,900-ish yards, 30 touchdowns, but still, he this is his best move. Right to Zeke. Yeah. So at the end yeah. of the day, what really are you doing? Zeke takes all the pressure off of Dak Prescott to be able to get the ball up the guys like Jason Witten, to get the ball up the guys like Amari Cooper, to be able to get that ball downfield. And it just kind of blows my mind that this guy who has not won an, a Super Bowl, has not won an NFC Championship game, has not won an MVP award, did not win Rookie of the Year, has not really done anything other than have some decent stats, uh, stats and show that he can have one thirteen and 3 season. That does not mean that you are a good quarterback. Because how many quarterbacks have we seen that are complete garbage, back themselves in to good records and be able to win a Super Bowl? Perfect example. Tell me, who was the quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens when they won the Super Bowl the first time back in 2000? I'll wait. First time back in 2000. Don't know. You stumped me. <laughs> oh, a lot of people always forget who it was. Just because he didn't do anything. Because you know who it was? It was Trent Dilfer. Ooh. Yes, Trent Dilfer. Now, do we Next consider Trent month, Dilfer right? to be a great quarterback? No, but guess what? Trent Dilfer has something Dak Prescott doesn't have, and that's a Super Bowl ring. Just saying. Yeah. You know, and uh, granted, a lot of people are saying right now, well, yeah, but they also had Ray Lewis and that amazing Ravens defense. That's great, but guess what? It takes a whole team to win a game. It doesn't take just a defense. Yeah. Look at the weapons that Jerry Jones puts around Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. A lot of qu quarterbacks do not get that uh, audience that Jerry Jones commands there in Dallas. If he doesn't have the athletes there, he's like the New York Yankees of the NFL. He'll go buy them. They got Amari Cooper in there. It makes it easy on a quarterback when you have all those weapons. And like mm -hmm. you said, just be able to hand the ball off to a top-tier running back. 
you have all the weapons around you. The fact that you're turning down this deal does not make any sense. You take the five-year deal. You prove that you belong there. You prove that you are the quarterback. You prove to the franchise that you can win the big games and getting to the champion NFC championship and vying for the Super Bowl. But you take this deal. Um, five years, $175 million. I mean, it's a big deal. Highest yeah. paid quarterback in history. I don't know what you're trying to command past that. And we've seen a lot of players, even here in Jacksonville, that try to command big contracts, and then they're just turned down, or they're turned away, or they're uh, uh, they're out of town. Yeah, Jalen uh, Ramsey's out of town. We saw um, Yannick Ngakwe, who's trying to command big money here in Jacksonville. Jacksonville basically told him no, um, and trying to look for ways to get him out of town. Um, they've traded away a lot because. A lot of these players are putting too much of a worth to their name. And I think they're over evaluating similar to like a homeowner saying, Oh, my mm-hmm. house is worth this much. And it's like, no, not really. <laughs> your, your roof is like 15 years old and your AC is broken and the plaster is coming off the walls. Your house not, not worth that much, but uh, you got a good Cadillac in the car being Zeke in, in the driveway. So <laughs> exactly. Nice car beat up house yeah you're not worth that much yeah definitely not and we look at the weapons he had we had mentioned you we had mentioned amari cooper obviously zeke in the math backfield but you also have michael gallup who honestly was stepping it up all year long and showing why he was a great contributor you also had guys like Noah brown devin smith which kind of whatever but you also still had jason witten who was like the ageless wonder at tight end right now and Mm -hmm. now you just drafted cd lamb so what really excuse do you have with all that talent and plus one of the best offensive lines in professional football that you can't get the job done? And, and you know, they always want to try and compare Dak Prescott to Carson Wentz. If Craig is here right now, he would be kissing Dak Prescott's butt into the extreme amount that he could, both cheeks, full lip, pressed as hard as he can to try and tell me right after how much better he is than Carson Wentz. Let's look at Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz, his deal is only worth $32 million a year. That's $3 million less than what Dak Prescott was just offered. Guess what Carson Wentz has? If he would have finished that season, they won the Super Bowl, he would have been MVP because even without playing the last three games, he still had more touchdowns and still more yards than Tom Brady, who did win the MVP. And then he still, guess what, has a Super Bowl ring. So at the end of the day, he turns around after all that and there's all the injuries, still gets his contract, and then last year ends up throwing for over 4,000 yards and makes the playoffs as the only quarterback to not have a 1,000-yard rusher or a 1,000-yard receiver. So you're trying to tell me Dak Prescott, with all the glitz and glamour around him and players, is better than Carson Wentz, and he can and he deserves to make more money. Bull. Garbage. Gah! Yeah. But you have your team players like Carson Wentz that are willing to take less money in order to bring in more high-profile talent to, around you. And it that's why smarter, we have a, a Super Bowl win that's on Blu-ray. <laughs> it's smarter as a player to know your worth. Don't over-evaluate yourself. Know your worth. Go in there. If the franchise does you good, which the Cowboys have done Dak Prescott good over the years, you – have to set yourself up nicely but you also do not overprice your franchise to where they can't bring in talent to play around you i would if i have a couple top tier wide receiver or running back that want to come to my team Mm -hmm. and i'm holding this very absorbent amount of money in my contract i may be renegotiating that because if i renegotiate i get these players to come into town to play with me and i could win the championship Versus, no, I'm going to be selfish, take all the money for myself, only have my talent there, and then all of a sudden the team doesn't reach its heights, doesn't win a championship, doesn't go to the NFC championship. And players need to stop being selfish, and players need to get back to this uh, idea of a team, coming together as a team. You look at all the best teams out there, uh, that went all the way to the championship level. One keeps on popping in my mind was the Detroit Pistons when they went against the yeah. Lakers with Tayshawn Prince and all them. Yep. They wasn't a team of superstars. It was five guys willing to work w- with one another. And some of them were cast-offs from other teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
they get there to Detroit, they put in that everyone buys into the message and they win a championship, but not one superstar on that team that year. No, they were all so, just hardworking players that were able to contribute and come together when needed. Because even even with our own experience playing football, you can see what happens when guys buy into a system. When you buy in, it, it changes everything because people actually believe. They're not just there like, oh, yeah, you know, it's – is what it is. Let me collect my check, play this game, whatever. But when you buy into a system and you fully believe that you can do it, changes your entire work ethic, changes your approach, and, and it honestly helps inspire around you. So it's it's crazy to see those kind of things happen. But with this, Dak Prescott's not helping anybody. He's not inspiring anybody. He's just being, in my opinion, outright selfish, and it's unwarranted. Because we saw guys like Tom Brady for years take pay cuts, just like you were saying. And they ended up with talent around them being able to pull off what they did in 2007, having an undefeated regular season and going on to win six Super Bowls and all that. It's not by chance. It's because Tom Brady knew that to be able to, to have a successful team, you got to be able to go and get the guys you need. It's not just one guy. And I feel like Dak Prescott thinks, even though he has Zeke standing behind him, that it's it's all on him for some reason. So that's, I don't what, know. that's why the Cowboys will never win because Jerry Jones, like you said, likes the glitz and the glamour. Mm hmm. I'm sorry, but the glitz and the glamour doesn't win you championships. Yes. You have good individual efforts, but you will never bring a championship. It's got to be the whole team being bought in, like you said. Um, those teams that you saw being bought in um, win no matter what player is on the court, on the mm -hmm. field, on the pitch. Um, Carson Wentz goes down for Philadelphia. Nick Foles steps up in the spot, wins them a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. The reason why that happened, everyone was bought in. I was watching this documentary on the Las Vegas Knights last night, and it was their uh, historic run that they made and made it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals in their first season of being an exhibition team. Mm -hmm. That should have not happened at all Never. with the Knights. And they pretty much got cast off like uh, second liners and third liners from other teams that they got in the expansion draft, and they make it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. Why? They were playing with a chip on their shoulder. They were playing as a team. They were playing as one cohesive unit. There is one point in that season, they were down to their fourth string goalie. Yes, I remember that. Because they all got injured in that one season. Guess what? They still continued to win because even that fourth stringer that was sitting on the bench was bought into the team's message. Absolutely. And it, it just seems like Dak Prescott and individuals like Jalen Ramsey, individuals like Unique Ngakwe that are commanding these big, large contracts – or even individuals up there in Detroit, you saw um, you saw those individuals leave town and badmouth Matt, Matt Patricia on the way out. I'm sorry, but even if you're employed by somebody um, that kept you employed for years, you don't badmouth them on the way out, even if your work conditions were horrible. Absolutely. You, you leave on a good note in any situation. And these athletes, I think, have become almost too full of themselves. They need to get back to reality, get back to the uh, sport and start playing as a team. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. And that's the big thing a lot of them forget is that they think that, oh, well, I can just kind of do this any old way I want or, oh, I just want – no, you you got to be part of a team. You know, everyone is here to be a part of a team. And the reason behind that is because at the end of the day, it's a team sport. You know, there's 22 – if you want to include kickers, punters, and long snappers, there's 25 players that have to come together to make it happen. There's three phases of the game. You don't play all three phases of the game, Dak Prescott. So why don't you go just be quiet. Sit your little 45 million plus ass right on over there and everything will be okay. Because you know what? There's a reason Dallas went and got uh, Andy Dalton. And it's because Andy Dalton was a starter. Andy Dalton has been able to have success. Has he had some recently? Not really. But hey, you're in the black hole known as Cincinnati. What do you want? So at the end of the day, if Dak Prescott goes down or Dak, Dak Prescott can't perform, Andy Dalton will step in. And you will see Dak Prescott in a new uniform come next season. I'm telling you now. I would have loved to see the Cowboys instead of go with Andy Dalton is when Cam Newton got released. I would oh. have loved to pick up Cam Newton to kind of light a fire underneath uh, Dak's butt and be like, all right, if I don't perform, I have Cam Newton who's one on the very top level there in Carolina that's mm -hmm. going to push me. I would have rather seen that matchup than the Andy Dalton because um, I don't think Andy Dalton has the skill set that Dak has. So he's never going to really challenge him. He's never going to really feel threatened in his position. Uh, I think Cam would have actually created a player underneath his butt to where he would have had to perform because he knows Cam has that same competitive edge about him, um, very similar to Dex. 
that and Cam is a, is a much more large body style person. He's also a lot more uh, mobile than an Andy Dalton. So, yeah, it would have been very similar in their playing style. So I think Cam Newton definitely would have given him some pressure in, in quarterback competition. So Dak needs to, I think, take more of a realistic look at himself. Maybe he just doesn't realize that at the end of the day, bro, you're, you're only so good. You're not Tom Brady. You're not Aaron Rodgers. You're not Drew Brees. Like, calm down, realize your plays, and, and become a contributor. You know, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. We still got to get the season underway. And uh, and I kind of want to see how Dak is going to approach things, because remember, we only have until July 15th. And then the franchise tender that the Cowboys apply to Dak Prescott will become live. So at that point, uh, the franchise tag number was thirty one point four million for Dak. So that will lock in for the season. And they're not allowed to negotiate until after the season is over. So. We'll see how it shakes out. Do you think they get a deal done by July 15th? Uh, no, I think it's going to be a longer holdout, especially with this coronavirus thing that's happening, because if that gets delayed and pushed back, it kind of gives more leverage to Dak in this situation as far as getting his contract settled before the season kicks off. But what do you do if you're the front office for Dallas? You have Andy Dalton that you brought in from Cincinnati. He, Like you said, he hasn't been proven these past few years up there in Cincinnati, but obviously you're playing in Ohio, um, that godforsaken state. Sorry, Grant, <laughs> in Ohio. But you bring him in, if, Dak, if you don't get this deal done and Dak decides to sit and demand this type of money, mm -hmm. do you feel comfortable week one going in with Andy Dalton? Ooh, man, that that that's going to be difficult. Well, the franchise tag, Dax, well, I mean, hopefully he wouldn't sit out. He's being franchise tagged, you know, but I could see him just because of how this situation has unfolded. I could see him trying to pull something like that just because at the end of the day, Dak, he has to realize he's asking for more than he's worth. And if he doesn't, I don't know who he is consorting with to try and figure out the best approaches for his career, but he needs to go hire somebody else. I don't know if it's his agent. I don't know if it's his mama. I don't care who it is, but they need to figure it out because 45 million. Really? I don't even think I would pay Tom Brady in his prime for that. So I, but I think the agent brings that money to you, that deal to you. They're the middleman. They true. hand that paper across the DAC. I think it was Dak's call on this. He sees that paper, he sees those numbers, and he turns it down. And I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure of why. I'm still unsure of why you would ever turn this down. Um, you take the deal, and you take the deal, and you don't ruin your reputation in Dallas. Yes. He's got a pretty decent reputation there in Dallas right yes. now with him and Zeke. They're fan favorites. But in doing this, it kind of leaves a little salt in the wound for the fan base. They kind of start viewing you a little bit differently because you turn down a large amount of money when a lot of people are out of work right now. Yeah. That doesn't sit well with the average fan. You're yeah. seeing somebody who, in my eyes, is very selfish and take the money, still be the fan favorite, still build your legacy there in Dallas, hopefully retire with Dallas after yep. you've won some games and renegotiated after this five-year deal, a uh, three-, four-year deal for even more money, retire from Dallas and be put in the Hall of Fame there in Dallas. That would yeah. be my goal at it. I think that's a smarter move. Yeah, I absolutely agree because they always say that first contract, you know, sets you up, uh, gets you in the door. The second contract sets you for life. So at the end of the day, I understand that he wants to get paid. Everybody wants to get paid, especially during these times. But at the end of the day, bro, you're, you are, like you said, he's coming off as straight selfish. You have not proven yourself to be worthy of $45 million plus a year. No player has. That's why no player is getting paid that much. So yeah. it's just – uh, it's just absolutely ridiculous to me. But, you know, I think this could end up becoming a very large distraction throughout the season because if they don't sign any kind of a contract, you hit July 15th, franchise tender becomes locked in. Now the speculation happens. Now, and it's not even going to be just fans. It's going to be players, personnel as well, being like, oh, man, is, is this guy even going to be here next year? You know, man, is this guy, like, more in it for himself or does, does he really care about the team? You know, and those are the questions that are going to creep up that are going to end up casting that cloud of doubt. And it's like you said, once fans turn on you too, you know, might as well be a nail in the coffin. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Look at, Nick, 
look at Nick Foles in Jacksonville. <laughs> yeah, that didn't take long at all. <laughs> no, the fan base is very true to their Jags, and they support them wholeheartedly. And as soon as Nick Foles comes back in and doesn't perform, they turned on him mm-hmm. quickly. And that's because of how much fandom uh, Gardner Minshew uh, commanded when he started. And he's a crowd favorite here in Jacksonville, and I wish him the best going forward. Absolutely. I'm ready to see more Minshew mania, and I hope he has a ton of success in Jacksonville because that is an entertaining person right there, I tell you what. But you know what else is entertaining? Taking a look back through sports history because we got to know where we came from and what better way to do than taking a look at this week in sports history. I'm going to go ahead. I'll kick it off. May 25th, 1922. Babe Ruth is suspended for one day and fined $200 for throwing dirt on an umpire. If you did that today, though, you'd probably be suspended for the entire season without pay and probably be somehow jailed for 45 days or something. I don't know. The best video is that minor league coach that does the army crawl out to second base. Yeah. <laughs> Picks up second base, takes it with him down yeah. to third base. I think he takes third base with him too, and he's kicking dirt. Yeah, covering up the bases that he just stole. I forgot all about that till just now. That is great. Yeah, yeah check back out that video if you haven't seen it on YouTube. It's great. Minor league coach goes erratic. Yes. <laughs> um, also, we had that's happening this weekend. Looking back in 1935, the great. I'm a track and field coach myself. So I appreciate this Mm -hmm. Um, track and field athlete, Jesse Owens, one of my favorite athletes of all times. If you do not know anything about Jesse Owens, um, read some books about them, watch some highlights. They got plenty of documentaries out there. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal individual, great athlete in my hometown of Michigan or up there in my home state in Michigan, um, not too far out in Ann Arbor. He breaks four world records in 45 minutes at the big 10 meet at Ferry field there. It was remembered as the greatest 45 minutes ever in the sport. Jesse oh, yeah. Owen, phenomenal runner, like yeah. phenomenal athlete all around. Great individual. Yeah, absolutely amazing what he was able to do then. May 25th, 1965, Muhammad Ali KOs Sonny Liston in one round for the heavyweight boxing title rematch and takes home the heavyweight title. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. That's right. 1996, the first Super Rugby final in Eden Park, Auckland. The Blues win the inaugural title with a 45-21 victory over the Nettle Sharks. Fullback Adrian Cashmore lands three penalties and three conversions for the home team. That's right. May 26, 1923, the very first Le Mans Grand Prix de Endurance is run, uh, setting up a great legacy of auto racing. In May 27, 1975, the Stanley Cup final um, Buffalo, the Philadelphia Flyers take back-to-back titles. They beat the Buffalo Sabres two to zero for a four to one, four to two series win. And then, then we lose our next six finals. <laughs> <laughs> it was painful. I'm not gonna lie. May twenty seventh, nineteen eighty two, John Mc, uh, McMullen purchases the NHL's Colorado Rockies and gets approval to move them to New, to the New Jersey Meadowlands to create the New Jersey Devils. In May 27, 1997, Major League Revenue sharing begins. The New York Yankees pay out the most at $28 million, and they're still paying out today. And they should be, those dirty Yankees. May 28, 1742. That's right. This is probably the oldest uh, sports history fact that we have ever covered on this show. The very first indoor swimming pool opens in Goodman's Fields, London. In May 28, 1962, the Wide World of Sports premieres on CBS Radio. So we get introduced with that great show there, Wide oh, World man. of Sports. That's right. Kicked off with Chris Schenkel. That was amazing stuff. May 28, 1995, the Chicago White Sox and the Detroit Tigers combined for a record 12 home runs at Tiger Stadium. Five were belted by the White Sox and seven by the Tigers. Michigan and Turnbull, I love that stadium. I wish they didn't tear it down. Oh, I know. Lots of memories in that stadium, especially seeing Cecil Fielder crank it over the outside the stadium. (laughs) Uh, May 28, 2006, Barry Bonds hits his 715th career home run, passing Babe Ruth on the uh, MLB all-time list. Man, I remember that one live. That was crazy. May 29th. 
Yeah, I know. May 29th, 1922, the U.S. Supreme Court rules that organized baseball is a sport and not a business and thus is not subject to antitrust laws. In May 29th, 1980, Larry Bird beats out Magic Johnson for NBA Rookie of the Year. Ooh, man, imagine having those two battling out for Rookie of the Year. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. But that has been this week in sports history. And now we're going to move on to the good old give or go. And we haven't done this one in a while. So this one's going to be awesome. But I'm going to throw this one to you first, Kevin. The Cleveland Browns are offering a chance for two fans to script plays during a preseason game. Give or go. Mm, I'm going to give this one. Can I give on it a little bit? What do you think about it? Yeah. So I agree with the fans in here. Like it's sports entertainment. You had said that with wrestling. I agree with it with everything, MLB, NBA, NFL. It's the fan sport. Give it to the fans. Give them every effort opportunity to get involved with the sport, um, being able to script out those plays, mm -hmm. being able to get involved. Um, the most, the biggest sport out there is the esports now. Everyone's yes. pushing it. There's thousands of people involved with it. Thousands of people watch it on Twitch and all these platforms, and that is growing. So give the individual, give the fans. Um, more chance to get involved with the game. If you get them more involved, you have a more loyal fan base. So I commend the Cleveland Browns and what they're doing here. They're trying to get the fans more involved, similar to what the Flyers did when they put in that smash room up yes. there in Philadelphia. Um, it's a great way to get the fans uh, engaged and get them um, around your team, even though your team's the Cleveland Browns. So any way <laughs> to distract you away from the game is probably a good thing. And what's great is how they're doing it, too, because they're doing it as part of their all-in challenge. So uh, one winner is going to be determined by auction and one determined by a raffle, but all the proceeds are going to uh, help raise money for Meals on Wheels, No Kid Hungry, America's Food Fund, World Central Kitchen, and the and Feeding America uh, during the coronavirus pandemic. So uh, honestly, I think it's a great way to help give back and to also show that you are all in with your fans because they not only get like say one, two plays, they get a script the first 15 plays uh, with with their offensive coordinator, Alan Van Pelt, and with the Browns coach, Kevin Stefanski. So it's, it's gonna be extremely interesting. All I know is I kind of like want to try and win this somehow just so I can like show my medal as a coordinator and be like, like, listen, I know I can do this better than you. I play this guy in a lot of NCAA and Madden, so I feel like I got a handle on this. So, you know, <laughs> we'll see what happens. But it's still a great way for them to give back and uh, create a little of excitement in the preseason where games don't always <laughs> always matter. All right, so our next one, we have running back Devontae Freeman reportedly says he may sit out the entire 2020 season if his contract demands are not met. Give or go. I'm going to go on this one. Yeah, this one I feel honestly is not really worth the time because there's a lot of running backs, and we've seen this I feel like over the past five, maybe ten years, where there's been a devaluation of the running back position. Not saying there aren't good backs out there, but – in a pass-happy league, you don't see quite as many unless you're a dual-threat style running back. And Devonta Freeman isn't bad, but he's more of a run-first kind of guy. So I just don't see, especially with the kind of the dismal past couple seasons he's had, I just don't see it turning into anything. So, meh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So the Pittsburgh Steelers, though, are going to limit their ticket sales in anticipation of social distancing and are said to be cutting their ticket sales by 50%, give or go give on this one pittsburgh steelers um and your limiting ticket sales on this you're talking about a very motivated fan base the fan base that sticks with their team no matter what mm -hmm. um this is huge this huge news and you're going to have a lot of small market teams that are going to take the stance and look at what everyone else is doing kind of what we talked about with the nba earlier mm -hmm. and they're going to you're going to have teams like Jacksonville and Detroit and all these smaller market teams looking at the Pittsburgh Steelers and what they do and taking it in and trying to emulate what they're doing as far as uh, ticket sales. But this is a huge deal. This kind of shows fans 
insight into what the front offices are doing. And it shows you that when we do return back to football in August and in September, there's going to be limited attendance. And what are they going to do with those ticket prices? Mm. I know I was talking about it with a buddy of mine, and he's he was took the stance as they're going to basically uh, price out the middle class, uh, lower income uh, across America. You're going to have ticket prices that are similar to ticket prices you'd see in the playoffs and for championship games um, being offered out to fans. Um, you may see ticket prices two, three hundred dollars oh, just yeah. to get into the stadium to be one of those few that witness in live what's taking place. Um, it may just be the suites and um, premier seat, uh, seats that they sell out because that's the most revenue they can generate. You're not going to see those $10, $15 tickets being sold to the average consumer. So it really hurts the everyday average America with this um, insight that the Steelers are giving us and these other teams that are coming out and saying limited capacity because uh, you look at it, most of the stadiums, the higher you go in the levels, the more average your American is and more ordinary they are, um, these are the working class Americans that need this sport, that mm -hmm. love to go watch the sport, that are probably your most loyalist supporters are those everyday Americans, um, the ones that put in the work Monday through Friday, the ones that have been essential to us during this crisis, right. the ones who have, um, they need this type of getaway, and that they can't go on these absorbent seven-day cruises or vacations uh, internationally, or even some of them can't even travel out of state. And sport is their vacation. If they go to the game on a Sunday, they're usually staying up preparing on Saturday night. They do the whole get up as far as tailgating at the game. They go to the game, enjoy it. They're able to enjoy a nice meal after the game and celebrate their team's victory. And you won't have those individuals being able to celebrate the way they did before. And I think it's disheartening for the average American out there. Absolutely. And when you think about especially the Steel City, that's a city of blue collar workers that work hard for their money and put in honest work day in and day out. So if you alienate the main uh, focal point of your fandom, you're going to end up with a lot of issues, I feel like. so. And it's not that it's I feel anything intentional. Obviously, we're trying to have to deal with CDC guidelines and a lot of federal regulations and state regulations and local regulations. And it's it's honestly kind of a minefield for everybody. But at the end of the day, you can't just, oh, well, we're only able to sell 50%, so let's jack up those prices. That's not the way to do it because you literally are not only alienating, but you're honestly uh, kind of betraying that fan base because they are always going to be your most loyal support. So that is one thing, honestly, I probably didn't even think about until now is just how bad that could end up becoming, you know, and not just in football, but across all sports, you know, where it's cheap maybe right now to get into, say, a rugby game that you might see prices on that triple just to try and help cover costs. So it's it's definitely going to be very interesting when we return. It's, man, I'm surprised I haven't thought about that till now. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see some uh, fan bases come out there and kind of protest this a little bit. Um, I would love to see some head uh, head offices listen to their fans, like up there in Seattle. I'm wondering, I'm kind of anticipating what the Seahawks are going to do. Um, they've always been loyal to their fan base. Their fan base has been loyal to them with the 12th man. So I'm interested to see what, because if I'm a any type of front office person for any type of team, I would go out and find my loudest, most obnoxious fans. Because if you're only allowed 50% in your stadium or in some stadiums even less, give me the loudest, most obnoxious people I can put in there to try to generate the most noise so you mm -hmm. have some sort of home field advantage. Because now that's absent in this new world of sports that we're seeing, there is no home field advantage. True story. Um, the only disadvantage you really have as an away team now is the travel, the logistics to get there, the not sleeping in your own bed. Um, which is can be major to some players. To me, it's very minimum. Right. But now you don't have to deal with that crowd noise. You don't have to go to places like Philadelphia and have batteries thrown at you. 
<laughs> you you get to kind of relax when you go into Philadelphia Stadium now. <laughs> oh, whoever would have thought that would happen. We're not hucking snowballs at Santa Claus, so you know, you gotta do what you he can there. Late. He showed up late. Hey, that's why you don't show up late. We're serious about our Christmas. But at the end of the day, it's really crazy to see how this is going to shake out. And even the bigger question is, how long is this going to last? So it's going to be interesting. I feel once sports really, truly get back going and we see a lot of leagues uh, going back into the reopening process and, and to see what a lot of this will look like and how how things really will react because I'm not even talking just people, but you know, we, we do have a virus out there. So, you know, does this end up becoming a worse issue or not is going to end up being a thing people look at. So we'll definitely see, but moving on to our last topic for give or go NFL owners are voting on a sky judge and an onside kick alternative on May 28th. Give or go. I'm going to give, I'm in a talking mood today. Good man. Sky Judge, I love it. Put more technology into the game, but do not slow down the game for me. Make yes. sure whatever technology you're implementing into the game, it speeds up the game. It doesn't need to be slowed down. People are looking to alternatives like rugby because rugby is a fast-paced game and the clock does not stop from first minute to 80. There's constant movement. There's constant gameplay. Um, NFL needs to do the same. There's too much standing around. There's too much, in my opinion, there's too much advertising that takes place during NFL games. God, you ain't lying. You need to feel a way to bring the live footage of players playing the most optimum amount they can in that small uh, period of time. There's too much standing around that takes place in the game today. Figure out a way to speed it up. Um, have earplugs in all the referees' uh, ears so if it doesn't need to be challenged. We don't need to take this prolonged five, ten minute break every time there's a challenge play. Say we've already seen it on the video screen. We know that it's not going to be overturned. Let's keep play in in motion. Um, and the players would love that idea because they don't like standing around either. They have to find out ways, creative ways to stay warm even pregame. Um, and during the game because there's these elongated breaks and that takes a toll on your body does this stopping starting so I'm all for it if it speeds up the game if it slows it down get rid of it absolutely I can definitely agree with that and uh, with a lot of this a lot of this actually came as uh, original ideas from the XFL especially the onside kick alternative uh, which was a fourth and 15 uh, that has to be converted to be able to keep the possession and they already went ahead and omitted uh, the fact that you need to be trailing to be able to use that. So it's something that you would be able to use at any time. I think it's definitely interesting just because player safety has become such a predominant issue in the NFL, uh, especially with trying to limit concussions and the onset of CTE. And what better way than try and switch up things like onside kicks? Because I know, and, and maybe, I don't know if you remember this or not, and it's one of the few things I, I, I remember so vividly from our high school football days, is when we went on the road to play St. Augustine Nice, and we had an onside kick happen. I remember being on the hands team and two people down was a, a individual that, that we, we were friends with Mark Martinez or no, sorry. It was Matt Martinez, not Mark and Matt. And they, uh, niece had kicked an onside kick and Matt went to dive for the ball. And one of the niece players came to dive in at him and hit him in the head and almost bent him like backwards in a way. And it was one of the grossest things I had ever seen. And, and luckily he was perfectly fine. He was not injured. Uh, but, it's just things like that that uh, have to be limited that end up becoming one of those crazy scenario kind of things that can end up leaving somebody seriously injured. And, of course, we've seen things with the uh, Rutgers players, LeGrand, uh, who end up being injured on a kickoff and then being paralyzed. Uh, and a number of things happen with these kickoff plays that, you know, player safety obviously has to come into play. So I'm actually glad they are approaching this. But it seems like every time the XFL – decides to start a season, come up with a few ideas, and then have to either cancel or decide not to continue operations after that season, the NFL decides, decides to come in and just pluck ideas and implement them. Uh, a lot of people don't realize uh, things like the uh, overhead uh, action camera that you see implemented now in games, guess what? Came from the XFL. So it, it's things like that that you see implemented. Now, this is obviously a little bit different because <clears throat> we're talking about game about the actual game mechanics and, and things you will do in a game situation. I still think a fourth and 15 could help give certain teams like say the Kansas city chiefs who have a Patrick Mahomes, a fourth and 15 Patrick Mahomes, man, you might as well just go ahead and give it to him. However, if I have a Dak Prescott, 
sitting behind, uh, you know, on a fourth and 15 needing to convert, I'm going to feel a little bit better about it. So hand it off to Zeke. You have a higher probability of getting the first down by giving it to Zeke. <laughs> oh, probably. That's the sad part. But it's going to be interesting how this how this works out. And having a sky judge, an eighth official, I think is just a beautiful idea. Uh, I always say, you know, obviously you don't need all the officiating in the world, but to make sure that things are being done the way they need to, uh, mm -hmm. I think is instrumental. And I know with the sky judge, a lot of people are kind of hoping that this will help with pass interference issues, especially now that this, the pass interference rule they had as a challengeable play is no longer going to be in effect going into this next season. So hopefully the sky judge can help mitigate that, but we'll see, you know, that's the way. Go ahead. Speed up the game is all I'm asking. Oh is yeah. Don't add this on this extra sky judge to slow it down even more because I think fans are even in game fans. Even if you have 50% capacity, they're going to get bored with all the standing around. Um, I went to a, a bunch of games this past season and I was almost getting bored with the game because there's so much stoppage time. Yeah. I'm like, if we add technology, let's speed it up. And baseball was trying to do something similar to where they're going with almost digital umpires yeah. and they're using that box that we're all accustomed to watching as an audience. Um, and it says if the pitch is a strike or a ball, why wouldn't use that? That's exactly I mean, that's a no brainer. You use that, speed up the game. You know exactly if it was a strike or a ball. It's not up to somebody else's interpretation of what they saw. So I think it's a good idea here as long as it speeds up the game. The fourth and 15, I know you're in favor of it in player safety. I used to kick. You know that. I kicked yep. and I did other things. I played multiple uh, positions. I don't like this because I am a kicker, and I think <laughs> there's a special craft that goes into that onside kick. Well, you know um, what, Kevin? Not everybody's a great onside kicker like you, okay? <laughs> so, you know, this might come as a great thing for some kickers out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. But still, I think it's going to be interesting. So, you know, that vote will happen in five days. So definitely make sure to check back on next week's episode of Final Scores. We will have updates on that and let you know what happened in that vote. But sadly, we are getting near the end of our episode. So that brings us to the week ahead and with the week ahead that means sports are happening sports are happening and on the nascar circuit we have the coke zero 600 at charlotte motor speedway that's going to kick off may 24th at 6 p.m on fox so make sure you tune in to watch the coke zero 600 there at charlotte awesome speedway um you're going to yes. see a lot of head-to-head -head action going on in there a lot of great young talent in nascar i'm actually getting excited and because I was a fan of NASCAR in the past, I put it away for a few years, but I think I'm going to come back to it and start watching some of these young drivers compete. Oh, yeah. I know I kind of fell off after Dale Jr. retired, but uh, I'm not going to lie. It has been pretty exciting to see the kind of stuff they've been able to pull off. So we'll see. But I'm excited because with sports, you actually get things like, oh, yeah, soccer and German Bundesliga and Bundesliga 2, which will have six matches. Uh, on Sunday, starting at 7.30 a.m. And just to give you some of these matchups, because, you know, <clears throat> we like to make fun of the way I talk sometimes. We're going to have Schalke 04 taking on FC Augsburg uh, at 7.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, uh, which will also be followed by the Bundesliga 2 League with Hamburg SV taking on Armenia Bielefeld and Holstein Kiel taking on VFB Stuttgart. And then also Karlsruher SC taking on VFL Bochum. So definitely going to be some great soccer. And then later in the day, you'll have Manns taking on RB Leipzig and FC Cologne taking on Fortuna Dusseldorf. So it's going to be some great soccer that you can see. And hey, guys, sports are back. So let's just be happy we have that. If there's any German listeners out there, I do apologize for my host. <laughs> he probably just played all those names. <laughs> if I did, please let me know and I'll try to do better. <laughs> Just don't yell at me in German. We are having a phenomenal giveaway. It's uh, the first giveaway since I've been a part of Final Score. It's very easy to earn free money. Who does not like free money? Free money. Go look on Final Score page. Go ahead and give us a like on the page. Comment and share the post. you got to look for the post um, for a $20 Visa gift card. And we're mm -hmm. going to be posting that periodically through the week. The deadline on that is May 31st at midnight. So as long as we see a like, comment, and share, 
you are entered into that giveaway for the $20 Visa gift card. I don't know of an easier way to get me get money. We are putting it forward. Like, comment, and share. You get entered in the giveaway, and you could win some free money. We're also looking into providing giveaways in the coming months. So make sure in the coming weeks. So make sure you guys listen. Stay uh, stay looking at our posts that we're making on Facebook because Chris yes. got some exciting news. I think you're talking about it pre-show. You're going to be doing like an in live giveaway thing. That's right. Come next week as part of our special Final Score episode sixty. That's right. We're turning sixty. We're giving away a twenty dollar Visa gift card live on air as part of Final Score trivia. So all you have to do is listen to Final Score next week live here on Facebook Live or on Twitch. And when we give you the prompt for the number, which you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it up there. I haven't thrown it up there yet. Boom! There it is. There's the call-in number, 386-320-6146. Mark that number down because next week you will be calling that number to answer a trivia question. If you are the first caller with the correct answer, you will win yourself a $20 Visa gift card. So it's definitely going to be amazing. So definitely make sure, check in, final score, episode 60. Can I, uh, can I get entered in that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you're probably going to end up being the host of that. So, you know, I'm going to need to calm down. Next episode, you're just going to see, like, a we'll be right back as I'm calling in to <laughs> free money. <laughs> so, a funny thing happened, fans. Uh, Kevin Wathen has – no, I was kidding. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man, that'd be funny. But I tell you what, got fans, you know, definitely make sure you check in. Though. We're going to be trying to do a lot more of this uh, as we go forward. We definitely like to try and give back to the fans as much as we possibly can. So, definitely make sure that you watch Final Score. That way, you don't miss out on these kinds of opportunities because, hey – we like to give back to you guys, so keep it going. But sadly, that does mean that this is the end of our episode. We thank all of you so, so much for watching us and taking your time out of your day to spend with us here on Facebook Live or on Twitch, depending upon the platform you're watching. And you can follow all things Final Score by going to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, or Instagram and searching keyword at PCN Final Score. Give us a like, give us a follow, check mark for notifications, share us with your friends, invite your friends, leave a comment, maybe make a pie on the side. You know, you can do anything you want, but still make sure you try to support Final Score any way you can because we try to bring the absolute best that we can to you in the world of sports. So, and we can't do it without guys like you. So please make sure to show your support any way you can. But until next week, I'm Chris, that's Kevin, and you just watched Final Score. Y'all have a great night.